Hi, fellow pilgrims and friends. It's great to be back. I am here with a Camino video for you today. So um, as you can tell, I'm not on the Camino currently, but I am at home. It is a very cold winter day and I am pretty much in the process of planning a future Camino. So I'm hoping to be back on the Camino in the spring, fingers crossed, and also maybe in the summer as well. Um, so in the meantime, I'm sitting here kind of planning out what Camino I can do. And it made me think that it could be really helpful maybe for me to come on here and talk about how to choose a Camino route. This is a question that I get from a lot of pilgrims and it's not an easy or simple topic, right? There's a lot of information that goes into it. Um, but I think, you know, as I've walked a number of Camino routes and as I keep planning more, um, I do think hopefully I can kind of present some information and break it down to help some pilgrims decide on how to pick a Camino. I think this video will probably be most helpful for a first time pilgrim as they're kind of starting this process and thinking now, which Camino route do I choose? I think if you already have walked a Camino and you're maybe looking to walk your second Camino, this video also might be helpful because I'm going to break down a couple different routes and hopefully it's got some good information. I'm going to keep it relatively simple. I'll probably talk forever, but I'm going to really just fo focus on four different Camino routes, really the four most popular Camino routes, and try to break each of them down and talk about why a pilgrim might choose any of those for a first Camino. Uh, there are a lot of lesser known Camino routes as well, or less, lesser traveled routes. And a pilgrim may choose one of those for a first Camino, and that's great. I think hopefully in the future, I'll do another video that also kind of talks in more detail about some of those lesser traveled routes. But for now, we're going to kind of stick with the four most popular routes. Um, and I would really recommend any of these four for a first Camino, and I'll kind of explain why. So let's kick it off with the number one Camino route, and that is the Camino Francaise. Uh, this is the Camino route that, you know, when you hear people talking about the Camino, typically they're referring to this route. So this is the route that runs for about 800 kilometers from saint jean pied de port which is a village on the French side of the Pyrenees. Uh, this route, the first day, crosses the Pyrenees into Spain and then continues along the north of Spain to Santiago. It takes most pilgrims, if they can do the whole route in one go, it takes about a month to five weeks to walk. So I think, you know, it's overwhelmingly the most popular Camino. I think most pilgrims, as they're walking their first Camino or trying to choose their first Camino, they, they pick this one. This was my first Camino as well. I think reasons that it's a really good first choice or choice for a first Camino is that it has great infrastructure. So there are albergues and hotels, plenty of, accommoda of accommodation all along the route. So you can kind of walk, you know, five, 10 kilometers and always find another place to stay. This gives you a lot of options. Uh, it's generally possible to not plan too much ahead of time to kind of set out on the route and kind of walk for as long as you want and then stop in a village and say i'm going to stay here there are a lot of different options and ways to kind of break this route down uh, there are plenty of bars and restaurants you know you're kind of very often going through towns and villages that have pharmacies and other resources and supplies um, so you're never that far from civilization that was a really important consideration for me as I was doing my first Camino. Um, I had never done anything like this. I was pretty daunted about the idea of walking across an entire country. I didn't know if I could do it. And so I think the knowledge that I was never going to be too far from other people or from towns and villages, that there would be help if I needed it. I wasn't alone in the wilderness. That all was really reassuring to me. Um, Again, because it's the most popular Camino route, there are going to be a lot of other pilgrims on the path with you. I think for a lot of pilgrims, especially for your first Camino, this isn't a bad thing. Um, some sections can feel a little crowded, but I think having a lot of other people there on the same path as you from all over the world is a pretty cool thing. Um, you know, you have the opportunity to make friends, to form a little pilgrim family, to develop a community, to have, you know, beautiful conversation on the path and in the evenings at your rest stops. Uh, so I think the number of pilgrims really adds to the spirit of the Camino on this route. Uh, the route generally, the terrain is easier than maybe not all the other Camino routes, but it's one of the easier Camino routes to walk. I think that's also really important for a first Camino. Um, now, 
that being said, I think walking for like six to eight hours day after day after day is a challenge in and of itself. So I think undertaking any long walk is going to be a challenge. So I wouldn't necessarily say that walking a Camino is super easy. However, this route doesn't have maybe as many ascents and descents as some other Camino routes do. Um, if you're walking the entire about 800 kilometers, there are going to be a few stages that are more challenging. Uh, but generally, this isn't a route that's super challenging. Uh, let's see what else about this Camino. It can be walked any time of the year. Um, in winter, there are again a couple sections. You just have to be careful of the snow. There are not going to be as many accommodation options in the winter, but it's still possible to walk in the winter. Summer can get really hot. Um, I walked this route in the summer and there were some really hot days, but it wasn't horrible. However, I do think spring and fall tend to be the most two most popular times for this route. So again, I think, you know, most pilgrims, if it's your first Camino and, you know, you might be a little nervous about the physical undertaking, if you know you want to have plenty of accommodation options and services along the route, if you want to meet other pilgrims, I think this is a really good option for a first Camino. That being said, let's talk about some of the other routes. So the second most popular Camino route is the Camino Portugues. And so this is the Camino that runs through Portugal. So officially it starts down in Lisbon and it goes 620 kilometers up to Santiago. Now the most popular part of this route, however, starts in Porto and that's 232 kilometers to Santiago. Um, and when we talk about the Camino Portuguese as being the second most popular Camino route, we're really looking at that section from Porto to Santiago. Now, I haven't walked the Camino Portuguese yet, so everything I'm going to speak to just comes from hearing other pilgrims talk about it and things that I've read. Uh, I was in Porto for a few days um, in the summer of 2019 and I saw the arrows all over the place and I saw their pilgrims and I love the city of Porto and so I added it to my list um, and hopefully in April I'll be walking a section of it so stay tuned for that. Uh, but the Camino Portuguese is a really great second choice. Um, excuse me. It's a great choice and a great option for a first Camino. I think one reason is that it is, while it's not nearly as popular and kind of crowded as the Camino Frances, there are still a lot of other pilgrims who choose to walk this Camino. And so, again, maybe unless you're walking in the winter where you might not see many other pilgrims, you're not going to be alone on this path. I think there's good pilgrim community, um, especially the section from Porto to Santiago. I think it's much more quiet walking from Lisbon to Porto. But if you're looking at Porto um, and carrying on to Santiago, you're going to meet other pilgrims. It's doable, I think, in about 11 to 12 days, that section. So for someone who's got two weeks to travel or to walk, I think this is a great option. This is an easier Camino. Um, and again, from what I've read, this might be kind of considered the easiest Camino. It is relatively flat, so you don't have the same ascents and descents as you'll see on some of the other paths. So again, I think for a pilgrim who, you know, might want to have maybe not as much of a physical challenge, but you want the pilgrim community around you and kind of feel the spirit of the Camino, I think the Camino Portuguese is a really nice option. Um, it is doable in all seasons of the year. Again, in winter, you just have to make sure accommodations are available, maybe plan ahead just a little bit. Um, and the summer can get hot. So again, I think spring and fall are really popular times for this Camino, but it can be walked any time of the year. And then next up, so third in popularity, we've got the Camino del Norte. So this is the northern route and this runs right along the northern coast of Spain. It begins in Irún and it goes for 825 kilometers to Santiago. So it is just a little bit longer than the Camino Frances, uh, but again, takes about a month to walk, a month to five weeks. This Camino, um, I have walked this. So I walked the entire route once and then I walked for a second time, just like the first two and a half weeks or so. So from Irún to where the Camino Norte kind of splits down where you can walk to connect with the Camino Primitivo. So I did that section a second time in 2019. Um, and I find the Norte to be absolutely stunning. 
I'm not really going to say I think it's the most beautiful Camino, but like for sure it's up there. I think maybe it has more single beautiful days collectively than any other Camino I've walked. I also love the coast though. I love walking along the water. You know, at times you're walking along this rugged coastline and there's no one else in sight. You feel like it ha you have it all to yourself when the weather is nice. It's just, it's stunning and so beautiful. So I think, you know, for the landscape, this is like a really beautiful Camino. It's why some pilgrims might want to choose the Norte. Um, it is less crowded than, again, than the Camino Francaise. Um, a few less pe pilgrims per year walk than the Camino Portuguese. But again, you're going to be meeting other pilgrims. Um, definitely can form a Camino community on this pilgrimage path. Um, I think the accommodation and services are pretty good along this route. One kind of caveat to that, however, is if you walk in the summer, you know, because this is a community that goes along the coast, you know, in tourist season, you have a lot of people going to these towns and to the beaches. And so accommodation can get pretty booked up there. And there are a few sections along the Norte where there aren't many albergues and there's not as much accommodation and especially in the summer things can get booked up so both times that i walked actually there are a couple parts where it's a little challenging to find a place to stay um, so i would still say though that summer is a really nice time of the year to go but to just be mindful that there may be a few kind of parts that bottleneck a little bit or don't have too many beds for pilgrims and to just be aware of that and so it could be a matter of reserving ahead for a couple spots, maybe having to walk a little longer or shorter than you had initially planned. Um, I don't think though it's a reason to not plan to walk the Norte in the summer. Uh, I do think spring and fall can be a nice time to walk. Winter, I'm, I'm not so sure about. I think a lot of accommodation can close in the winter, so you'd want to be careful with that. The Norte is a little bit more challenging than the other Caminos. I'd say, especially the first week out of Irun. So from Irun to Bilbao, there's a lot of up and downs. Um, and I've, you know, gotten a good amount of experience walking the Camino. And um, I, when I walked in 2019, especially that first week, I was pretty tired. Again, I'd say it's not a reason to take the Norte off your list. I think unless you know, like you're not interested in a physical challenge at all, um, I would say, you know, training will help. I think planning some shorter stages, especially early on and on those difficult stages, just kind of shortening it a little is definitely going to help taking it slow. I still think it's really doable, um, but it is going to be a slightly more challenging Camino. But again, for a pilgrim who I think is maybe looking for a particular landscape or a really beautiful Camino, if you know you want a slightly more quiet and contemplative experience, then the Norte is a really good option. And then the last Camino I want to talk about today is the Camino Primitivo. So this is a route that is 325 kilometers, about that. Most pilgrims can walk it in 12 or 13 days two weeks or so. So it's a bit of a shorter Camino. It begins in Oviedo, which is again in the north of Spain and it runs to Santiago. So there is an option uh, to connect the Camino Norte to the Camino Primitivo. And so there's a place where you can kind of go along the coast on the Norte or kind of veer off and walk a couple stages down to Oviedo to get to the start of the Primitivo. Uh, so while the Norte is kind of running along the coast, the Primitivo is all about the mountains. And so again, this is one where if you want a really beautiful mountain landscape, if you want to hike through the mountains, then I'd say the Primitivo is the one for you. Uh, it is, again, it has some stunning, stunning days. So I've also walked the Camino Primitivo twice. First time was in 2015. And then I just walked it this past summer. I walked at the end of July in 2021. And I have daily Camino videos of that walk if you want to see more. So if the weather is nice, you've got some outstanding and beautiful days. This is a more challenging Camino as well. I think it's considered a little more challenging than the Norte, uh, especially the first week or first eight days from Oviedo to Lugo. Um, you are going up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, 
I would say for this one that it is not a Camino I would recommend to walk in the winter. It might be possible, but you definitely are going to have some sections that could get really snowed in and would be impossible. Some stages would be impossible to walk in the snow. I think, you know, early spring, late fall, you also have to be careful with the weather. But I think, you know, kind of more into spring, summer, early fall, it's a great time of year to walk. In the summer, it can get hot, but I think also because you're in the mountains, it can be a bit cooler. I know in my experience, the week before I started my walk, it was really hot, but when I was on the Primitivo, it was actually pretty cool. I was wearing a fleece every morning, every evening, which was actually ideal temperatures to walk. So it's a good option for the summer. Um, the Pilgrim community is pretty good on that one too. You know, of these four that I'm talking about today, this is sort of fourth in terms of popularity. Um, but still decent enough pilgrim numbers so that you are not going to be all alone on this Camino, especially if you're not trying to walk in the winter or like super early spring or late fall, you're going to meet other pilgrims. There is a nice number of albergues, uh, not as many as maybe the other routes. So in some sections, you might kind of want to look ahead and just have an idea of the stages that you're walking and the options in terms of accommodations. You might have to walk slightly longer stages, or at least there are not as many options to split up the stages on the Primitivo into maybe like under 20 kilometers every stage without planning, let's say, right? So I think on the Camino Francaise, you can kind of head out and do shorter stages fairly easily. The Primitivo might take a little more planning if you need some shorter stages, um, but there are bars and restaurants. You're generally not walking super long stretches without any services. So, you know, I think for those reasons on all four of these routes, that's why I would recommend any of these for a first time Camino. Um, you're not kind of totally isolated. You're not all alone. There are going to be other pilgrims. You're going to kind of feel the Camino spirit. I think, you know, again, as I maybe in a future video talk about some of the lesser traveled Caminos, those are still great options, but I think just have some extra challenges. And I think when you're going off on a Camino for a first time, especially if you don't have experience with hiking or long distance walking or backpacking, I think having more services and pilgrims around is a really good thing. But again, kind of speaking to the considerations when heading out on a Camino for the first time, I think a lot of pilgrims are looking at that, right? Like what are the services going to look like? Do I want to be around a lot of other pilgrims? Like is finding like a Camino group to walk with or having that community, is that really important to me? Or do I want a more quiet contemplative experience? I think another big consideration, right, is the amount of time that you have. So if you can get a month to five weeks off to walk, then I think it is nice to kind of really look at the Camino Frances or the Camino Norte where you can walk that entire Camino in one go. I think if you have a couple weeks then, um, and you'd really like to do a complete Camino and end in Santiago, then I think walking the Camino from Porto or the Camino Primitivo could be really nice options. Um, I think, you know, a lot of pilgrims will also consider, you know, the level of difficulty in the terrain. I think if, you know, you know, you want more of a physical challenge and you really want to walk along the coast or you want to walk through the mountains, then I think considering the Norte and the Primitivo could be like really nice options. You know, I, and this is again, just kind of influenced by my own personal experience. Generally for a lot of first time pilgrims, I do recommend the Camino Frances. Maybe it's because it was my first Camino and I loved it. And it just, it just felt like the Camino and it was, you know, I had read so much about it and, um, I just, I, it had such nice pilgrim community. I felt really comfortable on it. I, I, I think there are lots of reasons why it's a great first Camino, but that doesn't mean that it's the only choice for a first Camino. Um, Basically, there are a lot of options. Um, I'm going to include some links down below that you can kind of refer to to read more, get some more information. Um, like I said, hopefully pretty soon I'll be releasing another video about some of the lesser traveled Camino paths. Um, I've walked multiple other Caminos at this point. Um, now that I have some experience, I've found that I really love solo walking during the day with some pilgrim community in the evenings and I have some other really nice options for you um, on some of those lesser traveled routes. So 
if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some good information out of this. Um, if you enjoyed the video, uh, feel free to give it a like. Um, hitting that like button actually helps more people find this video. Um, and if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to this channel. I'm hoping in the next few months to get some more informational videos out, but stay tuned because I really like doing kind of travel log videos of my day-to-day -day walks on the Camino. And again, I'm hoping to have a Camino coming up in April and then hopefully more in the summer too. So thanks again. I hope you all have a great day and buen Camino.